confession time. I buy lottery tickets, and I've been known to plunk the odd $20 bill into a VLT at Casino Regina. They used to call them one-armed bandits, but in the modern world, they don't have any arms, and in the big rooms where the machines do their thing, you won't find any smiles. None. Some years back, there was a study done about VLTs in Manitoba. It described them as the crack cocaine of problem gambling. For a while, Manitoba reduced their numbers. But when it comes to problem gambling, the biggest addicts, it seems, are governments. In 2009, Saskatchewan Gaming had total profits of more than $51 million. More than half of that went into general revenues to pay for things like health care, education, and services for children. An equal amount goes to projects benefiting First Nations and other local initiatives. A tiny amount goes to counseling services to help problem gamblers. Saskatchewan Gaming has been recognized as an excellent employer. I love attending concerts at the Show Lounge, one of the best venues of its kind in Canada. So why does all this bother me? Many years ago, I visited the gambling emporiums in Lost Wages, Nevada. You always had the feeling that the people behind it all weren't exactly choir boys. That sort of added to the sense of novelty and adventure. But when it's your government that makes gambling a fixed part of its revenue stream, something is seriously wrong. If the things it pays for are worthwhile, and I'm sure they are, Shouldn't all of us be prepared to pay for them, and not just those who have a weakness? The argument continues to be made that if the public sector didn't provide the opportunity to gamble, then the gamblers would simply go elsewhere and drop their money there. We can't turn back the clock, I guess, but it still bothers me.